So as we continue to be thrilled by some incredible performances at the Paris Paralympic Games, which is live on Sportsmax up to the 8th of September, it is the perfect time to discuss the recent historic development with the Paralympic movement here in the Caribbean. National committees across the region have united to form an organization dedicated to advancing para sport, Caribbean Paralympic. Caribbean Paralympic is set to work alongside America's Paralympic Committee, which represents the national bodies across the North and South American continents, and the International Paralympic Committee, the global governing body for para sport, to provide support for athletes with disabilities and foster the growth of Paralympic sports, not just in the Caribbean, but also Central American region. Now, the newly formed historic Caribbean Paralympic currently has nine member stations, Aruba, member nations, Aruba, Bahamas, Barbados, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Vincent of the Grenadines, and Suriname, along with Trinidad and Tobago. And joining us now on the phone to expound on the development is Vice Chair of the Caribbean Paralympic, Ray Roberts. He's out of Grenada. Ray, always great to be talking to you on the Sports Mac Zone. Um, I, 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 am I, it's, is it reasonable for me to suggest that this is a, a belated form of, of an organization, which probably should have been done some time ago? Good evening to you, Lance, and to your co-host. I want to say very much appreciate the opportunity for Paralympics. And you're correct about that. But again, I think it's a cultural thing in the Caribbean that um, maybe excluding Cuba and Jamaica, Trinidad, I think we have not risen to the challenge of recognizing that Paralympics is, you know, is on the same par when it comes to international sports as any other major competitions in the world. So um, for the last almost tw two years now, we've been trying to group ourselves together and hopefully before December, we would have an official launch. Uh, it would be online. We hope to be part of um, engagement with the University of the West Indies faculty in J Jamaica, the sports uh, faculty, uh, your own Christopher C. Um, uh, Christopher S Samuda. Samuda is yes. helping us to put it uh, together. He's a member of our, our committee. So we look forward to having an official launch, formally launch into the Caribbean before December. Yeah. Ray, may I suggest as well that you may have a vested interest in this because as one of the most respected journalists in, in Grenada for, for decades now, you yourself have a disability. And as far as I know, you're a fairly competitive table tennis player. Um, can you talk to us about your table tennis and, and the, that aspect of your being a part of this movement? Well... I, I have the greatest respect for sport because I say to people, if there was not sport, I don't know that I'd be the person that I am. Because in growing up, I think I had the most nicknames in the village. Wow. Um, nobody called me in my name. They would call me break up all kinds. I mean, you were just humiliated. Um, and I don't think it was meant to hurt you. I think it was something in the village and in the school you had all this long list of names, and uh, it just happened that I grew up in an area where everybody played sports, and being part of the Catholic community in Granans, the sisters had a table tennis board. And we all started to play there, and I don't know what creativity was in me. I was able to um, shine among the top players um, in the village, and eventually went on for the first time to play in St. George's, which was the main league. And when I got there, um, nobody called me my name. Everybody says, man, you have an easy, an easy draw, man. That breakup guy there, man. <laughs> and it so happened that I reached the last four. And I think that kind of transition uh, helped me and earned me respect. People started to call me my right name, Ray Roberts. But I would say even when I played in the Winter Islands and OECS tournament, I think I could call my good friend named um, Gregory Matthew, Greg, Gregory Phillips from St. Lucia. We met in a match. And when I walked out, there was a fairly good crowd in St. Lucia that night. And he said, this guy can't even walk. Here am I playing. And I was so hurt. I walked out there and um, I think he played me light in the first game. I won the first game. He won the second game, but the third game was the final game. And the third game, I beat him. And we became very good friends. And I still ask him, 
30 something years later, why did you say a thing like that? And he said to me, I never saw anybody like you play. So I had polio when I was about nine to 10 months and my left foot is about three inches shorter than my right foot. And the life in the left foot is about 60% of the right foot. But I would say I would not um, venture to change it for anything else in this world. It has served me well. Uh, it has helped me to help people who are physically challenged. I never thought about it that way, but as I get to know people being on the radio station, being on the television station, I found it very useful that people were, um, I don't know if it's amazed, but they were taking yeah. that seemingly I, they can do as me. So I had a vested interest in seeing Paralympics uh, grow in the Caribbean. And even I didn't know much about it. It's a coach from Sweden came to Grenada and he asked about Paralympics. And, I, and somebody told him, well, there's a guy with a disability. And he said, bring him. And when I played, he asked me, why have you not played in Paralympics? I said, what the hell is that? Mm -hmm. He said, that's an annual event uh, held in Latin America and South America and, you know, the ITTF. I yeah. So from there on, I realized it had value. And Paralympics in Grenada has grown, yeah. uh, you know, not to the level that we would want it. I think it's the same thing for most of the small islands. Um, the Olympic uh, Committee is very uh, supportive. Um, the government, too, has given a lot of support, and Rotary and some of the civic organizations who have always valued helping people who are physically challenged yeah. have added it. Add value to the whole thing. Yeah, very, very moving last few minutes there as you recounted some of your uh, exploits and experiences while you, you know, tackled the sport of table tennis. But for Paralympic sport to develop in the in the region, there has to be obviously more investment in um, in facilities and ensuring that. Paralympians or 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 sports aspirants with with disabilities are given a fair opportunity to develop in the same way that we would see countries from the bigger countries of the world develop their 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 disability their athletes with disabilities. Um, what specifically would be Caribbean Paralympics' first order of business with regard to? ensuring that athletes in your in your situation are given a fair chance well the first thing we have to challenge ourselves to work on is the mindset of our people because as i indicated to you while we do not have that behavior of the 60s and 70s prevalent to today mm -hmm. people who are physically challenged are employed um they can they give them license to drive vehicles and and so forth but we still have a mindset that um, these folks are somewhat handicapped and we must help them. People are pitiful. So I think the first thing we have to work on is the mindset of our people. And that has to begin at primary, pre-primary and primary schools, secondary. Because if we get that generation who will be the men and women of tomorrow to have that value and that appreciation that your disability is not an inability, I would think we would come a long way. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you look at it, the United States, they don't have Paralympic a committee. They have the Paralympic and Olympic a committee. Mm -hmm. England is the same thing. Yes. So they have one organization that caters for everybody. Mm -hmm. In the Caribbean, well, Jamaica has one organization. But if you look across the, the region, all the others, including Grenada, there's two sets of groups that are working and perhaps working to achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, Lance, I think our mindset and our the need to change our culture, to me, that is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Ray, um, great talking to you. We expect and hope that we'll have further conversations with you and other members of the organization as you try to build the Paralympic movement in, in the Caribbean. I know for sure that the Paralympics showing live on Sportsmax daily from now until the 8th of September would also go a far way into into exposing and sensitizing viewers um, about Paralympic sport. And we certainly hope you have uh, some success with the Caribbean Paralympic Organization. And we will stand ready, Ray, to be a part of uh, any 
news or any projects that you're putting out um, to, to sensitize our viewers with the movement. And we hope that Paralympics in the Caribbean will, will benefit from, from your organization. Thanks, Ryan. We'll talk again soon. Okay, Lance. Have a good evening. Yeah, great. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this. Thank <music> you.